Hey guys, it's Bina, and in today's video, I want to go over the Ballista Falconer build guide. So this is going to be updated as of, we are today, uh, March 11th, and I have done some spreadsheeting on this, so quite a bit of calculations. Uh, here, I, this is my spreadsheet, I am using the car spreadsheet for everything, and I just Frankenstein it to have my own numbers here. And I ran a couple of, I ran a couple of variations, a couple of different setups. And I came up with some new things. So I've added a new Morning Frost variant on the uh, on the Maxwell build guide. So that is one thing. And I've changed a couple of things as well. So let's go over the mapping and the bossing here. So let's go over one map here. We're at 600 and something corruption, I believe. Um, let's go here. So you just summon your Ballistas, right? You have a on-demand CC with um, Falcon Strikes. You have some guaranteed dodges with Silver Shrouds, which you get from just spamming Ballista and also from using Smoke Bomb. So Smoke Bomb is used as a defensive. It's also used as a movement ability to get out of like harm's reach when there's telegraphed attacks. You get up to six Ballistas if you have the bow and the... There's the unique bow Uritrin stand. And there is also the, um, the chest piece, which you can get an, a roll on, which gives you plus Ballistas and Ballista attack speed. So essentially, your Ballistas are just turrets, shooting anything in sight, clearing everything for you, super smooth build to play. Like, very good, especially when you're at a level of difficulty where you can just, you know, uh, zoom through the map and you don't really care about, um, you know, if you're just one-shotting every monster, then everything is pretty straightforward. So, this is pretty much a mapping. I'm still lacking gear. I don't have my unique pair of boots with moving speed crafted on them. So, I'm still uh, quite a bit slow in terms of moving speed. Still a lot of room for optimizations in terms of itemization on my character here. But you can, like, look at the build planner and see what you should be getting. So, this is pretty much the mapping. You throw a decoy to, like, actually grab aggro off of you, the decoy will actually grab all of the aggro off you. So this makes it very easy to dispose of any threats and uh, map at the end here. Let's go over and see how we feel against a boss at 600 corruption. So one downside about this build is that um, you need to get enough mana regen to be able to summon your Ballistas constantly. And maintaining six Ballistas costs quite a bit of mana. So getting between like 15 and 18 mana regen uh, is recommended. Another thing is that your Ballistas might just die, right? So certain boss fights, for example, Emperor of Corpses, your Ballistas don't always, uh, they don't have a lot of health. And you don't really want to scale their health because you keep resummoning them, resummoning them anyways. So here I'm going to be looking at, at 16%. I'm going to use Falcon Strikes. Falcon Strike is going to execute the boss at 16% because of this note here, Bird of Prey. Uh, so yeah, your Ballistas can die if you're not careful. So I'm using Experimental Affix. So six minions tele teleported around you after you use a Traversal skill. Our Traversal skill is going to be Aerial Assault. Aerial Assault is going to boost our Ballistas damage by giving them 2% damage per int. And it's a more multiplicative damage. So that is very good. Also, you're getting Ballista attack speed. So when you have your Ballistas and then you move around, all of your Ballistas follow you around because you have that on your boots and they get a nice little buff there. So uh, that is pretty much the main the main way to buff your Ballistas as much as possible. And then you have uh, the Ballista tree, which will go into the mana cost and duration. So minus mana cost is very important because Ballista initially cost 44 mana, which is absolutely huge. So you want to get this down as much as possible. And then go for the more damage. You get uh, Ballista get your stats ratio as well. So all of the damage nodes that we're getting, we're getting one pierce. Our Ballistas will also use our crit chance and our crit multi chance. So, uh, and our critical strike multiplier stat. So that is a very good way to increase their damage by scaling your damage as well. So these two nodes basically do this. And then we go into the extra duration. And we spec into here to go into the element stat ratio, which will apply armor shred, which, because our Ballista mainly deals physical damage, is going to be very, very effective, going upwards of 80% more damage for us. 
and um, yeah, so you stack a little bit of armor shred. It's gonna give uh, it's gonna give them the ability to have also uh, physical penetration because of this blessing. So Grand Fury of the North, which you can get into the uh, Age of Winter timeline, which gives them which gives you shred physical res on hit. But because of that note, it's just gonna give it to your ballista as well. So if you have more points, you can invest more. So right now, I do not have a good relic. Right, I only have plus two to ballista. I would love to have a plus four, which would be very, very good for us. Um, you would put more into enemy pierce and probably one more into element stat ratio to get access to that armor shred and that physical shred even faster. That is it for Ballista. Uh, aerial Assault, we're using this to buff our Ballista, like I said earlier. We're also using this thing here. I have noticed that whenever I use this with a Caltrops, it seems to work with Skyward Swoop, which gives your Aerial Assault a cooldown recovery when your Falcon hits an enemy. And because this is a... This is a um, minion ability, this seems to be like the Caltrops counts as a ability that your Falcon hits. So I'm getting more cooldown off of your Aerial Assault. Makes the mapping a bit er, a bit easier and a bit faster. So that's why we're going for this. We're going for the mana recovered. We're going for Ruminant cooldown as well. For Falconry and Dive Bomb, because Falconry, as we said earlier, we're using it for uh, mainly for the Cold Threshold and the CC. That is very nice to have cooldown on. Missing health recovered. Cooldown here. And then the extra points are in Featherstorm, so that we get an extra boost of dodge rating while we are in Featherstorm, just after using Aerial Assault. Falconry, we're also using our Falcon to apply our ailments. So, against harder bosses, if you start out and you know that you won't one-shot the boss in like a, f a few seconds, you can use Falcon Strike early on, it CCs, it applies more armor shred, so you get your damage ramp up uh, faster. It also recovers a little bit of health and mana, but this, this is not the main use of it, it's mainly for this, for the Screech, and for the Kill Threshold. We already talked about Ballista, now Smoke Bomb, we're gonna use Smoke Bomb, mainly to get Silver Shroud stacks. So Silver Shroud makes you dodge the next ability, and it's a guaranteed dodge on your next hit, so it's very, very good defensively. We have one source of it here, and we have another source in our passives with a Coordinated Fade. So when you use a certain ability on your bar, I have two points here, so my second ability on my bar, Ballista, when I use it every 10 seconds, it will give me a Silver Shroud. So, Silver Shroud, excellent. Element Cleansing, also excellent. Uh, backflip and Immunity during movement. So this is very good to avoid any Telegraph attacks. And you can also use it to use uh, to get a certain iframes during the animation. I'm using this to get Dust Shroud as well. Dust Shroud will give you a certain amount of uh, dodge rating and Glancing Blow chance. So you can get your, gl your Glancing Blow upwards of... You can cap your Glancing Blow this way. And you can also get uh, more dodge. So whenever you can, you might want to use this to either avoid stuff, get your Silver Shrouds, or give it even more defensive buffs while you stay in it. Decoy is used, again, defensively, but also during mapping with Warning Sound. If you use this at your feet, you get 5 seconds of, uh, of haste, which is really, really nice, right? So it just enables you to map a bit faster if you're in easier content and you don't think that you will need the decoy as a defensive option. So other than that, we use it for the duration as well, and we get a second charge here. So that pretty much covered the skills. All right, let's go over here on max roll. So I'm going to go over the passives here. So first of all, you want steady hand. You're stacking a lot of dexterity and intelligence because of that node in Ballista. Uh, in Aerial Assault, that gives you 2% more damage per intelligence. But the dexterity, you're getting it because it gives you 1% extra uh, placement speed for your Ballistas. It gives you 1% extra... Um, attack speed for your Ballista. It also gives you 4% increased damage for Ballistas as well. It gives you dodge rating. Like, Dexterity scales so many things, and we have so many uh, Dexterity scaling nodes as well, that we are going to be using a lot of Dexterity. So, mainly Dexterity and Intelligence. Dexterity here, we're getting less damage taken while moving. We're getting increased damage per movement speed that we have. And the extra point that we have is going to be in dodge and parry to get an extra glancing blow chance. Again, Dexterity, Moving Speed in the Blade Dancer tree, and Dexterity in the Marksman tree. Now, in the Falconer tree, we're grabbing all the things that will buff our Ballistas and our own uh, crit chance and crit multi as well. So, we're going with the uh, minion damage here with the Handler. We're getting 5% base, uh, base crit chance for our Ballista. It's going to make it very easy for us to scale the Critical Strike chance. Crimson Skies is used as a source of uh, damage mitigation against damage over time. Dexterity, one extra point just to get to Tactician, which gives us 18 bow flat damage for Ballista. Very important. Coordinated Fade, as I said, to get a Silver Shroud. 
uh, instant Falcon Strikes is going to be very nice. So you, don't, you won't stay in place and have an animation. It's very good defensively. Dexterity here. Minion damage and increased damage. As I said, we are scaling our own stats for Belisas as well as minion damage. So any nodes like these are very, very good. We also get a three points here to get a health gain on Falcon Hit. So because we're, we're uh, stacking Dexterity, this is also going to heal us quite a bit whenever we use Falcon Strikes. Armor per Dex. We go for this note here, Needle-like Precision, Crit Chance and Crit Multi for us and for our minions. So this is actually going to give us 72% Crit Chance and 72% Crit Multi uh, for the Belisa. Very, very good. And then Finesse them. This is one of the main ways that we're going to scale our Critical Strike Multiplier. So with five points in this, this is very important to note. Uncapped Critical Strike Avoidance, we're going to get 2% Crit Multi per three uncapped Crit Avoidance. Uncapped means anything above zero. So, this essentially makes us able to scale. Uh, usually, crit avoidance is a suffix, and it's a defensive affix, right? You want to reach 100% to not to never get crit. But now we can use a suffix to actually scale our damage. So, if you want to scale your damage even further, you might want to invest into even more critical strike avoidance. So, a very very powerful node. We're getting glancing blow here, and double the glancing blow chance if we have not been hit recently. So, we will not be hit very often with this build because of our silver shroud stacks and our dodge rating as well. So, uh, for your first hit after you, ha after you have a Silver Shroud, you will be able to dodge a hit, and then your next hit will have 100% Glancing Blow, which will give you 35% less damage taken on that hit. So, very, very good defensively, and it also gives us a flat 10% Glancing Blow chance. More damage and less damage, uh, more movement speed and less damage taken while moving. Double the effect with, with the recent Falcon hits, and then increase haste duration and haste effect here. And you also get haste when you use a potion. So this pretty much covers it for the passives. Now let's go over the gear. So in the gear progression here, we have like five sections. I have a starting gear, which includes no uniques. Advanced gear, which is like basic uniques with no LP at all. End game gear, which is basically what you strive to go for as a goal. Basically, uh, not too hard to get. For example, pick up the mountain 3 LP. This is the easiest item in the entire game to get with uh, 4 LP. It's like, it has zero potential, zero effective level of uh, legendary potential, and you can farm it in the Lightless Arbor Dungeon, which is very easily target farmable, right? Two LP Woven Flesh, three LP Urchin Sand. These seem like they are high, but they are not that high, and they are fairly common, right? Two LP, two LP Jungle Queen's Chaps, two LP uh, Foot of the Mountain, and three LP Melvin's Rit. So, these are the... Uh, the items that you can strive to get. And then if you really, really want to push it, you can go with the best in slot variant, which has like aspirational gear with like red rings of Atleria with one LP, and, like four LP jungle queens. If you're in Merchant's Guild, this will be much more obtainable than in COF. COF, you, you should probably go for an endgame gear setup. And then I added a Morning Frost variant, which essentially uses Morning Frost which scales your flat damage, which is transferred to your Ballista. This is a bit harder to gear for because the more decks you scale, the more minus resistances you get for cold and physical res. For each point of decks, you lose physical and cold, but you gain one flat cold damage to attacks and spells. So it's going to be harder to gear for, but it should deal significantly more damage. And if you want to go for damage, this is the variant that you want to go for. So you can take a look at this here in the gear progression section. Uh, for every single one of these variant and you should have a good time uh, gearing up your character and this also sells, tells you everywhere we can farm this you know peak of the mountain and foot in the lightest harbor dungeon and look for your return stand in the fall of the outcast by targeting unique bows so it's all very uh, simple to follow and you have like very clear milestone that you want to reach idols actually in terms of idols there are a couple of idols that you want you want to get crit multi and minion critical strike multiplier and because that crit multi applies 100% to your Ballistas, this is essentially 50% critical strike multiplier to your Ballistas. Extremely strong. Uh, sh increased shred armor effect. This is good because this also applies to your Ballistas. Well, it doesn't apply to your Ballistas, but since it applies to the monster and armor shred is an element, the effect takes place there anyways. Uh, and then you get both crit chance. Uh, increased health and LA res, increased health and LA res. These are pretty hard to get, but until you get these, you can use just regular uh, starting idols, for example, like you have here, like these, for example, increased health and LA res. You could use these or any other idol slots that, um, idols that you would uh, increase your resistances. 
It's basically you want to cap your res while getting a good benefit from them. And then these idols are extremely good because they give you 9% health. So they give you more EHP and more survivability. So that pretty much covers uh, the build, guys. Um, essentially, it plays very, very well. It's very smooth to play. Very easy. It automatically aims at any target. So the mapping is extremely strong. And uh, you can push very high with this build, as you see. I'm upwards of 600 corruption, and I don't have gear that is as, that great, and I am still having a very, very good time. Especially if you get the Morning Frost variant, like, you will push high and have extremely high damage, and it's gonna feel good. So, that covers it for this build guide, guys. I hope you like it, and uh, I'll see you guys all in the next video.